Hey, what's up everyone? Chris from Practical Worship Leading here. Um, this is a continuing series. I'm just calling uh, Look Over My Shoulder uh, While I Do My Job, <laughs> something like that. Uh, so this is, this is for planning center services, and this is how to add songs to a plan. Um, and uh, again, just uh, the idea is you're an apprentice, and you're just getting to see me do my thing and how I do it. And sometimes that I've noticed over the years that sometimes that really shows helps me to see how other people do things and spur some thoughts on how I can organize my systems and, and things like that. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward, but let's dive in. So here I am on Planning Center Services. Again, Planning Center has a bunch of apps. This is the services app. This is free. You can get a, your own copy of this for free um, if you're for up to 10 team members. Um, so even if you just want to start organizing your own uh, your own songs this way, you could create your own personal account. I actually do that with some of my original songs I've written and I create chord charts and and, and uh, keep them in here so I can transpose them really easily. So anyway, just a side note there. Um, but under uh, on this plan, we're on the plans tab and there is this, um, there are different service types. So that's what all these are. And we're looking for main worship services, what I called mine. Now, what's the difference between a template and a plan? You need to know that. I'll just briefly mention that. If I go over to templates over here, um, I have this default template. And what that is, is that I've already set up my service flow for a normal week. Um, oh, it looks like I accidentally <laughs> added a new item here. And my face is blocking it. Uh, let me see if I can delete that out. There we go. I must have done that in another tutorial video. So, uh, but I've got my service laid out. I also have all my teams um, and how many, the different positions and, and how many people I need for each position. So that's all under here. And then how that translates into actual plans is you basically use that template uh, when you click add a plan and you can do as many as you want uh, and it'll actually assign them to different Sundays, it'll it'll take the template and copy it out as a plan, and that's going to be attached to a specific date. So these are actually plans, not templates. But um, I'll show you one that I've already built out for this coming Sunday. So I have all my teams. I've already uh, I've already scheduled people. They've already responded or not responded. Uh, I have my order. I've already put in the songs. Um, so this is a completed plan. I'm going to go forward because I'm working with a guest worship leader, a friend of mine, and uh, I want to show him how to do this. So I'm going to let you look over my shoulder as I do it. And so it's really pretty straightforward, uh, depending on if, you, if, if you're a guest worship leader at a different church, this may look a little bit different, but this is how I lay it out. I have the, my liturgy already set up. Um, if I hadn't already chosen the songs, this is a good place to start. Um, my last video on Planning Center about um, adding a new song to Planning Center it talks about this songs tab. I'll just peek over here and it has this filter where you can filter by a bunch of different things, service type, music, all that. That also shows up if you click on one of these items, these song items. Um, and I click song and I click link a song. Then that, I'm going to get my get my head out of the way here. Uh, that this shows me all the songs for, by default. So what I usually do, so again, if I hadn't chosen songs and I'm in the process of choosing, this is how I do it. I go to history and I choose the main worship service type. And uh, then I click back. I can see this is the last scheduled. Um, so these are coming up in a week, so I don't want to choose those. These we did a, a, a week ago, two weeks ago, so on and so forth. Uh, so I can sort by that. I can also... So if I started choosing songs, uh, I also, uh, again, in the adding a song video uh, on practicalworshipleading.com, you can find that. Uh, you can, I created these tags called liturgy. So at the beginning, we're talking about creation, glory of God. So I know that we're going to do some adoration songs at the very beginning. If we can do it at all, that's how we want to do it. So we're going to, I'm going to click adoration. And then that gives me, that whittles it down to 38 songs. So um, that shows me these. Um, also, so say I wanted to do, uh, let's do Love Shines. 
And if I hover over these, uh, maybe this is an old one that I didn't do quite right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I don't know why it's hiding it. Let's try a different one. Uh, rejoice. So I've got it in G and in E, but uh, man, gosh, failing on all fronts here. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this is showing me that I think D is for an alto. If a girl was, a gal was singing it and they're an alto, if I'm leading it and I'm singing lead vocal, then I would do it in G. So let's say creation him in G. There we go. Now it's attached. And so um, I can close this out. And when, when my team comes to look, they have access to, they'll see this the song, they'll see what key we're in, and they'll have all of these, uh, these files, the chord charts, the MP3s, all that good stuff. Now, so I'm gonna carry on and say, okay, well, I need the next song. Um, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it, okay. Um, so I'm gonna click song again, link a song. And uh, liturgy is still adoration, that's cool. I might musically filter by, say I wanted to stay in G so I could just really quickly flow from one to one. I'll hit this start key of G. Let's say I wanted, uh, if I'm leading it, I would filter by baritone because I tag my keys as baritone. Uh, or let's say, hey, let's switch over to uh, have my backup vocalist or female vocalist sing it. So we'll see songs we have, in, adoration songs in G for an alto. And there's only one right here. So sweet. Uh, if, I, if I wanted to do a different song, uh, but still in G for an alto, I could, I could remove this filter. And then now I've got more options. It's just different liturgically. And then I could, uh, let's say we do rest in and when I click on that, I see all my key options and see alto is in G. So that's what I was filtering for. So of course it's there. And there we go. Um, and then you just keep going and fill it out. And that is how you that is how you add the songs into the plan. Now, if you wanted to change the song that you, you said, oh man, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, also, let me just say this note. If I'm having my, I, I lead most of the songs uh, but I would put um, female vocal lead here or something in the description and that would pop up here if it was going to be someone else leading it or you know put the name of the the gal singer that was going to lead it um, but again if I wanted to change the song completely what I would do is go here or click this uh, minus button and then it takes me back to my link a song page, and then I could just drop in a different song. Let's do solid rock in G. So that's alto minus two. So that's a little low for an alto probably, but that would let me flow. It's still, still maybe doable. So um, there you go. That is the way to do it. Let me know if you guys have any questions or want me to want to see how I do anything specific and I'll be happy to make a video about it. All right, have a good one.